Hello again and welcome back to our course on SharePoint Foundation 2013. In this section we're going to create a new site which will be a subsite of the site that we've been looking at so far. Now before we do that I want to just talk about a couple of other things that I've mentioned briefly but which are going to become increasingly important. When you're looking at a site like this one there's actually quite a lot of material there that you won't always want to see. Now I already mentioned the focus on content button up on the right here and sometimes it's helpful to be able to click that because it will hide the page header and the left navigation. Just watch what happens here. You see how the header's gone and the navigation has gone and then all you have to do is to click that again to bring all of that material back again. The next thing I want to talk about briefly now, although it's actually not a small topic, is the subject of permissions. I've mentioned already the need to have administrator and other permissions to do certain things. Well, although I'm not going to go through this extensively just yet, you do need to be able to look up the permissions that you need to do certain things, just in case you run into permission problems as you're working through the course with me. Detailed information about permissions is available within the online help and I want to just briefly now draw your attention to the relevant pages and sections in that. Here's the SharePoint help that we saw before. I'm going to type in the word permission and there is an entry there, understanding permission levels. Now of course can't absolutely guarantee that this will be the same help when you work through the course but this is an absolutely critical area of the SharePoint help so if this exact page isn't there I'm sure that something very equivalent will be let me just click on that particular link now as I say I'm not going to go through this extensively but I want to draw your attention to the main points it is quite a long article it is very much worth your while reading this article pretty much all of it but let me just take you now through the overview section first. Within SharePoint there are some default permission levels and the default permission levels very important to know. Full control is the most powerful permission level. I have full control on the site that we're looking at. Contains all available SharePoint permissions. By default this level is assigned to the owners group and cannot be customized or deleted. There is then a design level where users who have that permission level can create lists and document libraries, edit pages, apply themes, borders and style sheets. Then we have the edit level where people can add, edit and delete lists, list items and documents. Then we have contribute where people can add, edit and delete items in existing lists and document libraries. Then we have read, which gives read-only access to items, pages and documents. And then we have limited access, and in the limited access permission level, it enables a user or group to browse to a site page or library in order to access a specific content item, where you really want to target a permission level at a very specific permission, usually to read a very specific and quite limited group of items or items. Now one of the things you'll see a little bit later on is that SharePoint users can be assigned to groups and when somebody is assigned to a group they will inherit a permission level that is associated with that group. Now these are also set out in that article. So somebody who is in the visitors group will have the read permission level which includes these permissions and there's a list of permissions. Somebody who is in the members group will have the edit permission level and this level includes everything in read plus and then these are the additional permissions the people get. There is an owners group and the owner has full control. Now much of the rest of this document deals with the permissions that are needed to perform various tasks, various operations on a SharePoint site. And there are various ways of looking at this, what specific permission you need, for example, or whether you can do something if you're at a specific permission level. And I'm going to talk about these things in more detail later on. But just as an example of the sort of thing that you can look up, if you wanted to know what permission you need to create a subsite, if you scroll a little bit further down the document, 
permission create subsites you do get that if you have full control permission level you don't get permission to create subsites at any of the other levels now of course somebody who has full control could allocate this permission to somebody else either selectively or by changing their overall permission level but more of that later for the moment if you do run into problems with permissions on anything that we're doing on the course this is a good starting point to find out whether the permission level you're at is denying you the ability to do something or to find out what permission level somebody needs to do something or what specific permission they need to do something but as I say we'll come back to that a little bit later on so now it's time to create our first site this is actually going to be a subsite of the current site and it's going to be our team site the one where the team collaborates and in order to create a subsite there are a number of ways of doing it but if I go to site contents then scroll down to subsites and click on new subsite that will enable me to create the new subsite so click on new subsite now I have the details to fit in on the new subsite now you would normally expect of course to start from the top but let me just scroll down towards the bottom one of the features of SharePoint and this will to a very large extent depend on which version you're using is that you will be offered available templates for a subsite and in this case the templates we're being offered are team site and blog now at the moment we're going to select team site so we're creating a team site which is basically a site that's used for a team to collaborate okay so let me now fill in the details of my new site now I'm going to give the title team talk in the title itself I'm going to put a space in the name but as you'll see at a moment the website address will not have that space now I'm going to type in a description then I put in the website address note that the website address is relative to the website address of the top level site the URL of the top level site is spf 2013weteachprojectcom so this one is going to start at that same URL but then it's going to go down to the level of team talk now we select a language there's a drop down there with a good selection of languages we're going to go for English we've already chosen it to be a team site now we decide about permissions you basically have two choices do you want to use the same permissions as the parent site so in other words whatever somebody can do on the parent site they can do the same on this one or do we want to give this site different permissions to the parent site now the default is to use the same permissions and that's the option that I'm going to go with on this occasion now we have a navigation choice do we want to display this site on the quick launch of the parent site now by default that is no but I'm going to change it to yes and do we want to display this site on the top link bar of the parent site now again I'm going to go for the option of yes and now navigation inheritance do we want to inherit the navigation the top link bar navigation from the parent site now again the default is no but I'm gonna say yes on this occasion bear in mind that these are things that we can change later on but I want to show the effect of choosing yes for all three of these on the first occasion the first creation of a subsite so click on create and what you can see now is the team talk site now what usually happens with people who are new to SharePoint here is that they say well how do I know where I am now within my site overall well the title there team talk tells you that you're at that new subsite you can also see the name in here in Internet Explorer in the tab on Internet Explorer if you look in the URL you can see the team talk there 
The other thing that people always ask in this situation is, I've done that all wrong, I'd like to start a game please. If you go to the gear and go to site settings, one of the options in site settings is delete this site, it's under site actions. Permanently remove this site and all contained content. Now if you click on delete this site, there are some warnings there about the dire consequences of deleting a site. But when you're practicing, when you're getting started, you'll almost certainly create at least one site where you decide you'd really like to start again. But that's how you delete a site. In this case, I'm not going to delete this site, so I'm just going to press cancel. And then, of course, from site settings, I can click on home. But when I click on home, I'm not going to my original home. I'm going to home for Team Talk. You notice now that Team Talk has a link here, but I could go back to my original home, SPF 2013. And now, if you look at the left navigation, I've now got on the quick launch a link to the subsite Team Talk. Because I elected to have this added to the quick launch on the top level site, that's there. So I can go Team Talk and I can go back to the top level site. And the last thing I'd like to point out in this unit is that of course our top link bar now has two links on it. So SPF 2013 is my top level site. If I click on Team Talk, that takes me through to Team Talk. Note that when I'm in Team Talk, I don't get that Edit Links option. And the main reason for that is that Team Talk is inheriting its top link bar from the top level site SPF 2013. And if I wanted to change that top link bar, I'd have to do it at the top level. Or if I went to Team Talk again and clicked on the gear and go into Site Settings and click on top link bar the only option there is to stop inheriting links and if I stopped inheriting links i.e. stopped inheriting the top link bar from the parent site then I could customize a specific top link bar for the team talk subsite now I don't want to do that at the moment so all I'm going to do is use the browser button to go back and I'm going to leave those things as they are for the moment so we've created our first subsite. We've looked at one or two aspects of inheritance. Now it's time to actually put some content into the site and to do a little bit more work on customization. And that's what we're going to do in the next section. So please join me for that.